Hey guys, Grassman here. Playing back, back playing more Plants vs. Zombies. Remember, if you enjoy my content, feel free to like and subscribe. And here we go. No Sunflower Challenge, Fog Level 4. May R and Jesus spare us with balloons. Is this it? Guys, those, and then I don't think there's anything else we can even afford. Other than the loot pads, which we, won't, which we won't use. That's it. So as I was saying um, last time, if you're coming from the last video, you'll remember I had been, like, ranting the whole time. About the problems with schools and stuff. I'm probably not going to rant most of this time. You know, once I start a rant, I can continue a rant, but... Starting it is a little more complicated. So I won't spend this whole time ranting, but... I will finish off what I was saying last time with the thought of... Um... If you, if you asked the kids to help decide... The... Asking the kids could really help because the kids are the ones going through it they know how they how they know how to fix the system we were doing something at our school called interactive start where for the first 35 minutes a day we just choose an activity to, activity to go to whether it's doing rubik's cubes or doing chess but it's just something to help us start the day it could be reading a book it's just whatever we want whatever the activities are available that day it could be something physical it could be something that involves learning it could be something relaxing or it could be something... There was another option. It was like... Learn, create... Physical, or... Or relax. That sounds right. Um... So asking the kids could really help, because they're the ones going through school. They know how, to, how you could improve it. But they don't do that. Frankly, there's not even a lot of people looking for change. Everyone kind of just thinks it's not that bad. No one really realizes, actually, it is really bad. There are people in the States that don't know what the amendments are. They don't know their own rights, they don't know the laws, they don't know the amendments. Other than maybe the 14th and 15th, because you learned about... Because you learned about the Civil War. And there's a lot of, like, history textbooks that are wrong as well. There's a, there's qu there's a lot of history textbooks in the states that still say the cause of the Civil War was simple. States' rights. No, it wasn't. It was slavery that's obvious to everyone. And still most his still not most maybe, but a lot of history books in the States say it was because of states' rights, which it wasn't. And it's not a case of bad teachers either. My teachers my teachers are amazing. My teachers are great. There's nothing wrong with my teachers. It's how I'm being taught. It's that, it's that donkey, it's that donkey with the convoy example I was talking about last time. Stop trying to bring a, don a donkey pulled cart along with a military convoy. If I'm more advanced, stick me in an advanced class, and if the other kid is more not advanced, if he needs more help, then don't put him in the advanced, don't put him in a normal class, put him in a slower class. Everyone's different, so we need to teach people differently. My teachers are all great, they just... Like, if they taught how I could be taught, we, they would run out of things to teach in the first few months. We've already spent all the way up until now, and we're just on the test of atoms and stuff. You could have given me like a week worth. You could have just taught me about atoms for an entire week, and I would have known. I would have known it.
I mean, my, while in my cooking class, I've learned pretty much nothing, and at least nothing useful. Um, anything for that? No. Because I learned a little bit, but I'm not. I didn't learn anything I'm gonna actually use in my day-to-day -day life. I learned. Oh wow! If I want to become a professional chef, chef, these things exist. Wow! I'm gonna care about that. That's gonna help me somehow in the future. Probably not. So I haven't learned much in cooking. Gym's been fun, but again, it's only gym. We spent so much time in gym class, and it's only gym. I can't leave that. There's nothing I can do anyway. I don't think there's any way to get balloons. I don't bet I have. Um... So in science class, it's really the only place I've learned anything. In English, I'm still, like I was ranting about last time, I'm learning about poems. I don't need to know poetry. We've just been learning about poems and stuff. We wrote, we wrote letters to our future selves, which is, like, I guess, interesting, but that's not helpful. So English hasn't done much either. I've only really learned stuff in science. We've been learning pretty slow in science. Overall, high school has been easier than- grade 9 has been easier than grade 8. Which is crazy, it should not be like that, like, ever. Um, this is gonna be hard level balloons. I have to arrive some stuff. And the school system is not a lost cause, it's fixable, you just have to actually try and want to fix it. I could fix it. Where I could at least ask for help. Hey kids, how should we fix this? How can we fix this so you're learning and you're learning at a, you're learning what you want to learn and at a reasonable pace? Again, stop teaching me poetry. Start teaching me. Like again, if I can get past with a poetry credit that I will never use, I don't need an English credit. So stop teaching me English. Or if I or if you insist, I absolutely need an English credit. Teach me handwriting. I don't need the teachers. Is this sound too loud? I don't need the teachers like writing in hand something I can't understand. If you walked into French class, French class. And the teacher was writing in Spanish, because, you know, Spanish is similar to French. You'd have a really t hard time learning. Because, yeah, it's handwriting is similar to English. Really, it's similar to anything. It's just, it's not actually rearranging letters, it's just taking the letters and changing them. S becomes this, this becomes this, that becomes that. So it's just changing the letters. But it's still different, and without explaining to it, we're not going to learn how. We're not going to understand it. Okay, so that guy dies. Grab you. Maybe we won this one. Shouldn't worry about the water lane a bit. The last guy can probably be Tangle Kelped. So, like, something like Interactive Start will prep the students for the day, make them actually want to learn. So you, you need a few things. You need, one, the students to actually want to learn. And then, then once the students actually want to learn, you just teach them advanced stuff. You teach them fast. And stop teaching me about poetry when I don't want to learn about poetry. Ask the students, what do you want to learn, and then teach them about that. What the? What was that? Can't tackle. Um, can't get the nine seat slots. Nothing else useful. I oh, guess Fosbreaker. 
Oh, great, you're not ready. Where's the skip? Okay, hang on a second, guys. Skip. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't have Ozbreaker. Doesn't even take any sun. I believe there were more squashes than zombies. Or just as many. This Vosbreaker is so ridiculously easy. The one in PvZ2 is almost impossible. Oh, there's like a bonus level every five levels. Smart. Click. Okay, why is it not tapping? There we go. Okay, I'll be right back. There you go. Okay, I'm back. You know what I should do? I should play some Hive. There's a cool board game called Hive. I'd like to, like... Oh, maybe I can look it up. Maybe there's, like, a free version online. We should do that. Maybe we, maybe we can play Hive. That'd be a really fun game. I downloaded this, like, chess app. It's... I don't know. I forget what it's called. Let me see. The app's called Dr. Wolf. And so it's a... You, like... You can play chess matches against him at different difficulty levels. And then he talks... And then you can, like... He talks to you about... Are you sure that's a good move? I'm doing this. Are you like I've left a piece open? Do you see what you should do? So I've been playing him at inter him at intermediate skill levels, and I keep I keep losing. Um. And then there's actual lesson bits too that I actually like, uh, let me choose my plans here. There's only so much I can actually take. Um, most of this I won't even use, but some of it maybe. Take the more expensive ones first so everything's organized. So it's a it's a good game. It teaches you how to like it actually includes some really interesting pieces of information. At one point he was in a, in like a lesson or something, he was asking me to start, and I made kind of a stupid move. I moved the pawn that was in front of my queen up, which kind of opens up a spot for a bishop to move up. And I guess it almost kind of lets the queen get out. But it's kind of a stupid move, because it just... It opens for a, a bishop to get out. It kind of opens the queen. And it kind of opens the king. If you want the king to move for some reason. And I'm like, oh, that was a stupid move. And he's like, interesting move. That's a move a lot of grandmasters use. And I'm like, what? Why? That looks worse than the other move I could have made. And he's like, but for this example, I like my students to, I like my, but I like my students to just do the normal move. And I'm like, wait, why would grandmasters use this? Do they want their queen to get out? I mean, I assume you do. I want to get better at chess. It's such a complicated game, though. You have to think multiple moves ahead on everything. The only way to be good is to think like move multiple moves ahead. And I'm not great at that. It's one of those things where you're probably better than most other people. You're just not that good. Although I have learned, I have like, 
I just got it today and I've already learned a fair bit. I learned, um, I learned how castling properly works. Cause you know, castling is kind of weird. It's the only move where you can actually move two, two pieces at once in your turn. And it's just weird in general. It's like, how does it work on the, on the queen side? How does queen side castling work? And it works like your king will always move two and the rook just zips around at the other side. So queen side castling where there's three spaces, your rook moves, your king moves over two and your rook moves over three. And if the rook has moved at all ever in that match, it can't, can't do the castling. So even if you move it somewhere and then move it back, it, I believe it can't castle. I'm not quite sure on that. It didn't, he didn't specifically say that's how it works. He just said if it's moved, you can't, then you can't do it. Even, and I assume that means even if it's put back. There's different skill levels. There's a whole lot of different, like... He talked... He talked... One of the interesting things he talked about was he talked about piece value. And it's... Because it's always very obvious that certain pieces are worth more than others. But it's not always worth, like, obvious how much they're worth. So the interesting thing he talked about was he said... A bishop... He said a bishop is worth about three pawns, which is an interesting thing to compare it to. So he said... Pawns aren't very valuable at the beginning, but they become more valuable. Excuse me. They become more valuable as you progress into the later game. So the later they go, the higher. So the later in, in the game you go, the more valuable a pawn becomes. And he said, generally bishops have a value of a, about three pawns, and generally knights have a value of about three pawns. Rooks generally have a value of about five pawns, and queens are worth nine. So a queen is worth. A rook, a bishop, or a knight, and a pawn. Which everyone knows, because the we because of all the ways they can move. And then he even it goes into some examples of if this happens, what should you do? And arguably, I found actually a move that I found a move that was arguably better. Like it was suggesting to, it was saying to do this one move. But I found a move that kind of works better. Because instead of just defending and getting a guy out, it actually threatens one of his pieces and forces him me to be able to take something. It's very interesting. I'll probably play more of it after this. I could record some of that, maybe. That progression through chess. No balloons in this level. Deeper in the bottom. Thank you. Took the right guy. I was also thinking, what if I made a Clash Royale card tier list? And then, because I, 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 th I, th I think, like, I don't think anyone's ever made a card tier list for Clash Royale yet. Then I realized I am horribly under... I'm horribly under-informed about how cl most Clash Royale cards work. For example, my Golem is level 7. Could you hear me over the ad? My Golem is level 7. I mean, like, I mean, like, the top thousand Canadian players and my Golem is level seven. I think I am in the top thousand Canadian players. Just crazy. <laughs> Lots of fog.
How do you guys like chess? I, I make moves kind of too fast. I need I need to take longer to like look at the whole board, see how will everything interact, and what would he do? What's his best move? Because I can look at the whole board, see I'm not in any immediate danger, and then make a stupid move. And then he goes somewhere and checkmates me. So I've learned, like, so he does, he does lesson. He does lessons. It's an AI. It's like an AI. It's just a game, but... I say he, because it's an actual, like, guy kind of look. It's like... It, the, there's like a picture of a guy as the as the computer is talking to you. So I so you say he. To be polite to the computers. So when our overlords take over, when our computer overlords take over us, you want to be the guy who's known for being polite and like nicely playing chess with the computer. Not to mention, I'm practically making making YouTube videos for the computers. It's not like any humans are watching these. There's that. There's the one guy, Hexagon. Changed his name. He's like the one guy who consistently watches the videos. Conehead there. What is there, balloons or miners or jumping guys or what's in this level? I, I didn't look. This doesn't matter. There's really only two guys I can play. So he does some lessons. I, I watched the basic lessons, like how how guys move and stuff. I already knew all that. I, I already know how guys move. But I watched it anyway. Just to go through the whole thing. And then... And the game definitely seems like it was made by a chess master. Um. So that one of the lessons was like going through development, and you might hear a, you might hear a chess pro say, "I'm gonna I'm developing my troops," and you might wonder what that is. Well, there's three phases of game: early game, mid game, and late game. Or end game. Early game is when you want to develop your troops. Generally, the rule is get a pawn out that allows a. Generally, they're like it's like a five-step rule or something. So rule one, point one, get a pawn out that allows your that frees your bishop. Number two, free a knight to protect your pawn. Then then three, bring out a bishop. Four, maybe do something else. Five, castle. Castling with the rook is really important because it keeps your king back hidden, and it allows you to bring out your rook. And following that, following that guy, it allows for like a a nice mid-game battle. So you want to get all your things out. You want to get all your you, you want to get your four troops out as fast as possible. So you're in like five or six or seven turns, eight is kind of slow. So you want you, you want to get the things out as fast. You want to get your knights and bishops out as fast as possible, and rooks rooks too if possible. Then, and I'm I'm decent at that. But I, then I struggle in mid game where it's actually like the battling part where you actually have to make really strategic moves. And then there's end game or late game, which is like finishing up. That's when pawns get really valuable. And you've got to rush a pawn to the end of the queen, and then you got to bring the queen. Then you got to trap them. So it's like it's all about like. Knowing, so at one game in one game, I was so close to trapping the other guy's queen, I was like a move away. But he had me in check. He had me in impossible to beat situation. I was so close to just being able to checkmate his queen. So I'm used. I'm used to playing like a conquest mode where you have to kill everything. But just finding those interesting checkmate situations, where it's not really about killing each of his troops, it's about getting to his king as fast as possible. We're actually running out of time. I've been talking about chess the whole time. I 
Whenever I have a troop, I'm just like running across my hand, fingers across like a. I pick the guy up and I'm running my fingers across the first layers of fog to see where the openings are. I'm drown you. Is there, is there just buckheads this time? defend the plantern. Well, I like being able to see. Sight is a very good sense to have, generally. Imagine chess, but you couldn't see the opponent's, the opponent, where the opponent's troops are until you actually, like, if you had, until you had been, had a guy on the square, or on the nearby squares. That'd be interesting for chess, like, if you could only actually, like, a computer chess where you could only see the squares that were that were surrounding where your chess pieces have been. You could be moving into a trap and you just wouldn't know. That'd be really fun. Uh oh. Don't, you don't, you dare eat my plantern. No, no, no. Bad, bad bucket, bad, no. No, you keep off my plantern. He's gonna eat the plantern! He ate the plantern! I can't see again. <laughs> Jerk. Got three ish minutes. Talk about. Very long level this one was. I think we are just about done now. Well, I have all the mowers, so everything should be fine. Um, there was a mi there were miners. They were jacking the boxes. I think they're the new ones. We didn't have those in the, the pool of these. The day. The pool day. Um. I think the two lanes are just gonna have to get... Uh, the top lane will probably be killed. The bottom pool will be killed, the top pool will run, the, will run into the thing. Let's go get killed by the, this mine will be killed. I want to put it in front because it'll just take longer. And there's the last one. There we go. So hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, if you enjoy my content, feel free to like and subscribe. And and hope you enjoyed. Now is your time to leave. I'm going to let the ad finish playing, so leave before you have to see the end of video ad. Bye, guys.